All right, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how we can take the lead forms and the lead ads that we built and use the interaction on those forms and ads and build new audiences we can target in the future and also leverage the activity of the existing audience and their interactions and continue to uh, reach out and uh, serve ads to them in different ways based on their engagement with the lead forms or conversions. And we're also gonna look at creating a look like audience on people that have converted or not converted on our lead forms. So uh, first of all, we're gonna go to the audience manager, which is always the first place that uh, we start when we're building audiences, we build in the audience manager. We do not build in the ads builder. I believe that's a very strong best practice and I would highly recommend that you do the same. So we're gonna create a custom audience here. And a custom audience allows you to pull audience data from a lot of different sources. So we have website traffic, customer file, Instagram events, you know, Facebook page, and we have lead forms here. So I'm gonna hit the, uh, hit the lead forms guy. And when I hit the lead forms guy, I'm gonna get this interface, okay? So this interface is basically my audience building interface for my lead forms. And there's a couple different options here. Uh, the first one is, do we wanna include people who meet any of the following criteria or who meet all of the following criteria? So if I hit this guy. So I'm gonna add a second piece of criteria just to illustrate and for conversation purposes. And when I add that one, you'll see that this says or, okay? so. Basically, we're saying we want anyone who opened this form in the last 90 days, and I'm gonna select a form now, so we're gonna do uh, just the newsletter form. Uh, or we are, want anyone who opened um, this form in the last 90 days, and we're gonna do you know, this console. So this is or, okay? Um, you can also add multiple forms here in the, same, in the same rule. So this will also kind of act as an or. Um, so basically you're saying, did they do this or this? And then you also have all, which acts as an and. So they had to open one of these two forms and they had to open this form. And so and is more restrictive. It will reduce the size of your audience because you're layering more requirements on the people that meet your audience, uh, your audience um, profile or, or um, uh, definition, if you will. Uh, or is more inclusive. You're gonna say they can do this or this or this or this. Uh, they have a lot of different uh, types of ways that can get into my audience and or is gonna allow more people to get in. So that's this first section up here. If you're not really adding more section, if you're not really trying to get fancy with your targeting, you don't need to worry about it too much. Um, I'm gonna delete this one for now. So what we're, what we're looking at is, um, and then you have the option of how they're engaging with your form. So the first one is anyone who opened the form. So if they clicked it and opened it, that it's kind of similar to a click on an ad. The next one is people who opened but didn't submit. So they opened it, they might be interacting, they might be answering questions, you know, doing things in the form, but they don't actually ever hit the submit button. So they've engaged but not submitted. And then people who opened and submitted. So those are people that converted on the form. And then we have a time period here. So the maximum time is 90 days and you get to choose your time period. So I'm just gonna say 45, why not? You're gonna choose your page and then you're gonna choose your forms. So you do need to choose the form. You can't just say all forms. It'll give you an error when you name the audience, but you're gonna choose the forms that you want. So I'm gonna choose the consult one as well. All right, so I'm saying anyone who opened these forms in the past 45 days, I want them to be in an audience where I can do something with it, all right? So I'm gonna do lead form um, opening, and then Paracor is the, is the client. So sometimes it's hard to find when you have a lot of clients. So lead form opens, I'm gonna say opens, I like opening. Okay, cool, so now when I create that audience, now it's gonna give me the option to actually create a lookalike audience, they're gonna give it, they're suggesting it right here, or creating an ad using the audience. So those are the next steps. I'm not gonna take either of those steps, I'm just gonna be done to show you for illustrative purposes that this is lead form opens, here's the definition when I hover over it. We have a custom audience, engagement, lead ad, uh, the size is here is populating and availability it's ready. All right, so that's how you create an engagement audience. Now I can use that audience in any of my ads in the ad set by selecting uh, that audience at the drop down near the top saying I want these ads to only run to people that have engaged with my form and it won't go to anyone else and the, that audience will automatically be updated on a rolling 45 day basis or 90 days or whatever you choose. So anyone that's engaging with your ads on a regular basis is gonna see that, is gonna see this new ad set that you've created with this audience because they're engaging with the forms. So that's pretty awesome. You can also run that as an exclusion. So if, if you're doing lead form completions, 
then now you can say if you're running other ad, if you're running retargeting ads or something else, now you can say I want it to show to all these people, uh, but I want to exclude people that have converted. Or if you're running just a totally different type of ad, like a first touch image ad, then you can exclude the people that have converted on the lead forms, and that's really nice because it's not going to show the ad to people that already converted. If you have like a special or something, I know that becomes a problem sometimes. All right, so that's the very first way creating a custom audience to target your people. Now we're going to create a lookalike audience. So when you create a lookalike audience, you have the option here to select your lookalike audience source. And I'd already selected lead form opens because a bunch of client data pops up when you do this, but um, it's going to give you all the sources so you can search here for the custom audience of lead form. So if you search for Paracore, that'll show up whatever your business name, whatever you na named it, it'll be in the other sources. And then you will also have quite a few options in the value based sources if you're working with other companies. Um, but the other sources is where you're going to find the custom audience. You're also going to find pages in here. You're going to find a bunch of different um, sor audience sources that they then create a look like audience on. So I'm saying lead form opens Paracore. And I'm just gonna click out of that, theoretically. There we go. And uh, then I'm gonna select the location. So for me, I'm just doing you know, United States. And that's it. You can only do United States. And then down below, we're gonna say, what is the audience size that we're looking for? We typically start on the zero to 1% because those audience sizes are fairly large. So 1% of the US, Look, it's going to be similar to the lead form opens. That's two million people. If you expand this, you know it's four million. Um, you can also create multiple audiences. So it'll do a one percent, a one to two percent, a two to three percent. So basically, what's happening is you're you're getting like one percent. This is like the the most targeted one percent, and then these are like not as close, and then these are a little bit farther away. So what you're doing is you're basically saying. A 1% lookalike consists of the people most similar to your lookalike source. Increase the percentage to create a bigger, broader audience. So when you go broader, typically the quality is going to decrease. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of nice that you can segment them out that way. Um, but So we're going to do two, I guess, just for fun. So what we're saying is we're going to take all the activity on our lead forms. In, and then we're going to, we want to find people that are similar to the people that engage with our lead forms in the United States. And we want the most similar people, zero to one percent, and then we want to broaden it out just a little bit and do one to two percent. And we're going to create those audiences. And now, when we create those, now we have these dynamic lookalike audiences again. So now we have three audiences that we've created: the lead forms, the lookalike, and the two lookalikes. And all of these are dynamic audiences. They are all. Um, it, you know, updating automatically just based on engagement within the platform, which is really cool. So what you'll do is when you go back to your ads manager, and I'll just show you where where and how we add them just to ensure that you're adding them correctly. I'm going to go to uh, lead generation. I'm going to hit edit here on the ad set. And then where a lot of people get tripped up is on the audience side, they're on this create new and I don't feel like Facebook CTAs are all that strong, um, or they're like, you know, like this doesn't fully look like a link to me. It kind of looks like it's part of the form. But if I hit this guy, then I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, oh, shoot. Um, so actually, uh, in order to make it a saved audience, I need to go in and like and save it on the, the lookalike. But what I'm going to do here, you actually do on the custom audience. And now we have lead form opens. So I'm sorry, you need to do it on the lead form opens right here. Uh, you don't do a saved audience unless you're to create a saved audience of the lead form opens, but that's for another day. Um, but anyways, so on the custom audiences, you can go and you can choose your custom audiences. And then like if you want to do the, the lookalike instead of the engagement, this is where you'd select the audience. I would uh, kill these demographics uh, unless they're really important for you. So like, for example, if we're just shooting for Arizona, perhaps, then you can filter it down even further. I'm just going to say Phoenix for now. So this goes from 2 million to 26,000, right? So you have like the lookalike, and now we're just Phoenix, Arizona. So instead of a 2 million person audience, now it's a 26,000 person audience. And you can change your ages here if you want. Uh, but in all reality, the lookalike should take, should take care of that. And then I'm going to kill this yoga stuff. This is for another thing we were messing with. And so that's 130,000 people, right? So that's kind of part of the problem with building the audiences in this interface is things can carry over, be a little bit confusing. 
Uh, but if you just want to do the look-alike and then you want to uh, restrict it geographically, that's a way to do it as well. So I always recommend that you um, build audiences in the audience manager when you can, and then go in here if you need to uh, for these look-alikes or for the saved audiences, or excuse me, the custom audiences. If you have a saved audience, you can use it right here. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions as usual, and uh, thanks for watching.